Artists have for centuries shown us the bridges between science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and the arts. The world's most pressing issues cannot be addressed by one discipline alone. And as you all know, we're gathered here specifically tonight to unveil our newest addition to the Avenue's art collection, Saul Lewitt's wall drawing 528B, 1987. Saul Lewitt was a key, highly influential artist of the late 20th century. Given Lewitt's proclivity for systems, rules, predictions, practice, and process, our 11th and 12th grade STEAM teaching team knew immediately that wall drawing 528B would be an excellent model to serve as the basis for an interdisciplinary experience. Maybe their homework in all of their classes, which would be this question, be how is Saul Witt a mathematician in the math classes? How is Saul Witt a scientist, musician, engineer, and artist? So we proceeded to design an experience focused on the analysis of Lewitt's work through multiple lenses. Lewitt developed and continued to work uh, in this kind of medium or series of works of the wall drawings, which are based on sets of instructions. And what's really remarkable, Lewitt was able to produce an incredible range of pieces that came out of this relatively narrow kind of category. Somehow they're going to create instructions, kind of like Solowit did, to create something. Whether it be visual or whether it's like a musical product, that they're going to come up with some idea, write instructions, that then they would pass those instructions on to another group or to two other groups. And then those two groups would install this, make this thing. I'm basically picking uh, a card from the deck with a number, um, and each number corresponds to a vector that I would have to move the string. So if I get eight, for example, I need to move the string up one and over one. And um, at the end of the deck, I'm supposed to have a whole pattern. We're using Arduino to paint a Solowit wall drawing. This project uses a robot with a marker to draw cosine waves around the paper. They thought about algorithms and how they follow sets of instructions in math, how they follow sort of procedures in science, and that got them into a really interesting space. Our project is about the um, transcription translation of DNA. What we had originally planned to do was write out a specific like genetic code using nucleotide bases and then have people translate them to form an artistic project. We asked students to sort of engage in this process, and as they did this, they start to notice more connections uh, embedded in the Saul Lewitt pieces. Lewitt's wall drawings help students realize interdisciplinary connections because his process conforms to a sequence of clearly defined steps. Here are the instructions, and here is the result of following the instructions. I'm a uh, programmer, so whenever I think of Saul Lewitt, I think of him as a programmer because he writes instructions, and really the only difference between a conventional programmer and Saul Lewitt is that he writes instructions for people, whereas programmers write them for computers. So I thought, hey, we have instructions on how to make this drawing. Can I teach a computer how to do it? This process, this artistic process, it could be applied to the realm of sound and music. And uh, luckily, we got this uh, project off the ground where we have visiting artists uh, called Ethel, this fantastic string quartet, to come in and work with a bunch of our upper school students who are really interested in electronic music. I want everyone to keep in mind that what we're really looking for is a set of parameters that we can follow to generate music. You know what I mean? So it's a series of instructions that you may or may not know where it's going to take you, but there's, there are guidelines that you are going to follow. The second thought was limiting ourselves by rhythm. Any pitch, you know, either static pitch or moving pitch, doesn't matter, but the idea being three long, slow, notes followed by four fast ones. They've been, we've been doing this kind of impromptu synth jams and they kind of meander all over the place and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't work. So I thought what we do is we throw them in the room with Ethel for several days 
and see what came out. The instructions aspect had a lot to do with like being able to articulate more abstract ideas. The way you go about doing math is very related to your physics class, your science class, chemistry. This metacognitive approach allowed them to clearly understand the relationship between process and product and to shed light on the unique link between STEAM disciplines.